This video was sponsored by Policy Genius. Well, hey, in this week's video, I'm going to show you a continuation of kind of last week's video where I built this coffee table. But what I didn't show you is exactly how I made these solid wood drawers and drawer slides. It's not that hard. No fancy box joints or hand cut dovetails. Just really simple, easy, nice looking solid wood drawers. So follow along, check the video description for links to all the products and that. And let me just say right now, if you're not signed up for my Patreon, you're missing out. It's like a giant party over there. Just one big backstage pass, all sorts of bonus content, weekly question and answers, you get ad-free YouTube videos, you get coupon codes to my website. I mean, go sign up. The link's in the video description. Come on. But most importantly, enjoy the video. So if you watched my previous video, you know I just made this coffee table. But what you also know is I didn't show you how I made the drawer. As you can see, there's this big hole here and we gotta fill it with something. So why not a drawer to hold delectable bottles of spirits? I start by thumbing through all the scrap pieces I have left over from the rest of the coffee table. Now fortunately enough, I think I'm gonna have enough pieces here to piece together two drawers. Which is a good thing because right now black walnut costs an arm and a leg and I will need both an arm and a leg in order to complete these drawers. Now I'm building these drawers for a specific purpose, and that's to hold bottles of liquor. So it was important that I measured some bottles of liquor and try and come up with somewhat of an average size to determine how big I need to build this drawer, or rather how many bottles I can fit in each drawer. So I got out some digital calipers and I started feeling around to see kind of what the consistency was here. Once I had a better idea of the exact size of drawer we needed to make as far as the height goes, I went over and started ripping pieces down to a consistent width on the table saw. Next, I went over to that gaping hole in my coffee table and I measured the distance from the back to the front to determine how long the sides of our drawers need to be, keeping in mind that they are gonna also have a drawer face that's about three quarters of an inch. Once I determined the size I was going for, I set up a stop block on my miter saw fence and I started cutting down drawer sides. Drawer sides, not to be confused with drawer slides. We'll get to that later. But for now, once I got all my drawer sides cut, I grabbed a quarter inch setup block and I wedged it between each drawer side right up against the outside edge of my opening. The reason for this is because I don't want the drawer to be tight in there. I want to leave a quarter inch gap on either side so that we can make our drawer slides work properly. Then I measured the distance between those two boards and went back over to the miter saw and cut down the pieces for the front and back of my drawer box. After I got all these pieces cut, I took one piece back over and just double checked that it would fit in between those two outer side pieces. I wanted a nice snug fit, but not too snug. Not like your Christmas sweater in January. Think of it like your Christmas sweater in October, before you put on the holiday weight. With all the pieces cut for our drawer box, I next needed to cut the panels for the bottom of each drawer. For this, I decided to do a little bit of a contrast and use quarter inch white oak plywood. But in order to hold that plywood, I needed to cut a groove on the bottom of each one of my drawer box pieces. Whenever I'm cutting a groove on the table saw and not using a dado for the correct thickness, meaning I have to make multiple passes, I like to also cut a groove in a scrap piece. That way when I go to make my second pass and bring that groove up to a quarter of an inch, I can use the scrap piece and test the fit on my bottom panel material before I cut all my actual pieces. With that fitting just the way I want it, I go back over to the table saw and I run all my pieces through a second time, bringing that groove up to a quarter of an inch, which will be just right for that bottom panel. With all the grooves cut in all of our pieces, things are starting to look very drawerish around here. 
but we still of course need to actually cut the panels for the bottom of each drawer. So I simply rip those down to the right width over on the table saw and then cut them down to the right size on the chop saw. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now with all the main components cut for my drawers, I fit everything together just to make sure that my panel's not too big and that all my sides are even and everything's going to come out nice and perfect. Which it does. Because this is TV and I can make all my mistakes when the camera's not rolling. So how do you like that? With everything roughly fit together, I started throwing bottles of alcohol in there like I was a prohibition agent in the 1920s. Uh, or something like that. Really, I just wanted to determine how many bottles I'd be able to fit. And I figured that I'd easily be able to hold five bottles in each drawer. But now I had to do something I hate. And that was try and do some math. Which is never any fun, and I recommend avoiding at all costs. But sometimes you just can't avoid it, like right now. I was trying to figure out if I use a half inch divider in between each bottle, how big could each individual slot be? After doing that pesky math, I determined that each individual slot can be exactly 4 and 5 30 seconds. So I cut down this scrap piece of ply to exactly 4 and 5 30 seconds. And then to test my math, I took a half inch setup block, which would be the same thickness as the dividers, and I just slowly walked across my drawer piece. Hopefully when I get to the end of this, my little scrap piece of ply will be exactly even with the end of my drawer piece. We'll see how good my math actually is. And what do you know? Perfect fit. Well, I mean, you just got to take my word for it. You can't really tell from that angle, but believe me, it was a perfect fit. Next, I needed to cut some dados into the front and back of my drawer to create a slot to slide in those half inch dividers. So I went over to the dado saw and I changed out the blade to a half inch. I cut a test piece and used a half inch setup block to make sure it fit nice and snug, which it did, as you can see here. And then I grabbed my Rockler crosscut sled and I raised the blade to just at a quarter of an inch. Don't need to go too deep. Then again, using that scrap piece of ply that I measured out earlier, I use it to set the distance from my fence to the edge of my blade and determine exactly where I need to cut my first slot. Now this is easy because the slots are gonna be identical on both ends of the board. So I start out by cutting a slot on one side, nice and easy. And then when that's done, I just take the piece. I show the camera that there's a slot there. Oh, wait, I'm gonna do another piece. I forgot I was doing two at once. Okay, I take that piece. Yes, I send that one through just like before. Okay, good. Don't hit your other piece when you bring it back. That was close. Whew, all right, now I got two slots. Now, like I was saying, because it's identical on the other side, now we can just flip the pieces around and cut another slot on the other end, just like this. Then once I have those slots cut on either end of my drawer pieces, I now take my scrap four and five thirty second piece once again and use that to measure over from the edge of that slot. I put a mark on the front of the drawer face and then I move the fence over so that my next slot starts right on the edge of that mark. And then you probably guessed what happens next. I run all the pieces back through the dado saw, putting yet again another half inch groove. And once again, you just flip it around to the other side and this should evenly space all of your grooves out nice and clean. Uh, like that. But let's test and just double check. This should fit perfectly in between each groove. Yes, 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 yes. All right, things are looking good. So we just continue this process with all of our drawer pieces, the fronts and the backs, until we got nice half inch grooves cut everywhere we want nice half inch grooves. And it looks something like this. Next, we gotta finally start trying to figure out how we're gonna join these drawers together. Because we can't just glue them together, and we can't nail them together like we would plywood drawers. 
and we want them to look fancy because this is a nice piece of furniture but we definitely don't want to waste our time cutting dovetails ain't nobody wants to do that so i decided to use custom dowel pins to hook all of these together so i start by marking the end of each drawer side piece the thickness of the actual stock i'm using next i wanted to determine exactly where i want my dowel pins to land so I just brought them a half inch in from each side and then I plopped one smack dab in the middle. For this application, it's really important that you have one right in the middle. And I'll show you why here in a little bit. It just is gonna look a lot nicer. Then after I get those marked, I find the center on all of those marks and it looks something like this. Next, we need to pre-drill all of these holes for our dowels. So I took each piece over to the drill press and using a 3 8 inch Forstner bit, I just started drilling holes on my predetermined marks. Now I will note, I'm not drilling all the way through. I'm just drilling in about a half inch. This will allow us to easily start our drill bit when we drill all the way through into our other drawer pieces and make a nice, crisp, clean edge that we can fill with a dowel. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a little bit. Just Hold on to your tootsies. Hold on to your tootsies? Who even talks like that? But anyways, your drawer sides should look something like this. Next, I took them back over and I don't know why, but I stuck it back on the drawer box. I guess just to see how things looked, but this was completely unnecessary. But what is necessary is to sand the interior of all your drawer pieces before you hook your drawer together. Believe me, this is a step you're not going to want to miss. Nothing is a bigger pain than trying to sand the inside of an already put together box. It's no fun and I don't recommend it for anybody. So just take the time to sand all the inside pieces before you hook them together. With all of our inside pieces sanded, now it was time to glue everything up. You might be thinking, hold on, glue everything up? You haven't even made dowels or inserted them? How are you ready to glue this thing up? That's crazy. Well, no, actually, it's going to be so much easier to put this together with dowels if we just glue it up beforehand. Now, is this a strong enough glue joint for the drawer to actually survive? No, it's not. It's end grain to face grain, and that's not ideal. But it is strong enough to just stay put while we put our dowels in place. So take the time, glue everything up, make sure it's nice and square exactly how you want the drawer to be. And that way you're not gonna deal with a bunch of pieces flopping around and falling over while you try and drill holes and insert some dowels. So just go with it, man. It's groovy. Pretty soon I had both of my drawer boxes all glued up and they looked something like this. Next I needed dowels, but I didn't have any 3 8 dowels, and I wanted to do white oak dowels to match the white oak bottom in the drawer, so when you don't have them, you just make them. I started by drilling a 3 8 inch hole through a piece of 1 8 inch steel. For this, I just used some angle iron I had laying around my shop. Once you drill a 3 8 inch hole into a piece of metal, next I took some white oak scrap, like this, and I went over to my planer and I planed it down to a square. A square that was just a wisp over 3 8 of an inch. I mean, just barely over. Just like, like I'll show you. Just like this much over. See, just a tiny little bit. I mean, you don't want it under. Are you understanding you want it just over? Then, because I just made one long piece of stock, I went over to my miter saw and I chopped it into some more manageable pieces. They don't have to be any exact length, just smaller, because we're gonna shove these in the end of a drill in a second. But before we do that, I went over to my oscillating bench top belt sander and I just shaved a little bit off of each one. Kind of like you're sharpening a pencil until it looks something like that. I did this to each piece until each piece looked pencil-like. But we're not done yet. Then I did the same thing to the other side, but this time I wanted it to look less pencil-like and more drill bit-like. 
Basically, I just needed to shrink it down small enough that I could slide it into my battery powered drill. Something like this. And now we are ready to make our custom white oak dowels. All we do is take that piece of metal that we drilled a hole in, we chock up a piece of this white oak into a battery powered drill, or a corded drill if you're an old guy, and you just drill it through your 3 8 inch hole. This is literally putting a square peg into a round hole. But that square peg comes out round after going through that hole, thus creating a nice white oak dowel. That is exactly 3 8 inch, which, hey, that's the same size hole we drilled in those drawers earlier. Man, that worked out great. Now, I know at this point you probably get the picture and understand how to do this, but I'm going to show you a little more dowel footage because it's kind of just fun to watch. I mean, you're literally making your own round stick thingies. I mean, I think that's cool. You can just double tap and fast forward through this part if you don't want to see it, but my guess is you're going to stick around and watch it because it's a whole heck of a lot of fun. Once I had enough dowel pieces cut, I went over to my miter saw and chopped them down to right around an inch and three quarter, which was just about, oh, half inch longer than I actually needed them. And with that, we are ready to hook these drawers together with our custom white oak dowels. Hey, this video is sponsored by Policy Genius. Now, I don't know about you, but Finding life insurance isn't always the most fun thing to do, but it's super important. For me personally, it was very important. My wife recently decided that she wanted to stop working and focus on being a mom, which is great, but it meant that I'm the only income supporting my household now. So if something happens to me, well, I want my family to be taken care of. So I wanted to make sure that I could find a great life insurance policy. That can be a daunting task, but that's where Policy Genius comes in and makes it super simple. Let me show you exactly how that works. When you go to Policy Genius, in minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Their licensed experts will help you understand your options and ensure you apply for the right policy. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance companies so you can trust them to offer unbiased advice and help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. Now you might be wondering, okay, where do I go from here? How do I sign up? Well, that part is insanely easy. All you gotta do is this. Getting started is easy. Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash bourbon moth. That's it. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. With all of our dowel pieces cut, it was time to take our drawer boxes out of clamps. Next, I removed that 3 8 inch Forzner bit out of the drill press and I put a little piece of tape on it, marking it right at an inch and a half. Remember our dowel pieces are roughly an inch and three quarters. And then I just went to town, continuing the same holes we pre-drilled through our drawer sides and into either our drawer fronts or backs, depending on what side you're working on at what time. As you can see, you wanna go nice and slow at the beginning so that you don't get any tear out. That's what those pre-drilled holes were for. And you just drill all the way down until you hit your tape and pull out a bunch of smoke and sawdust. It's actually pretty darn fun and satisfying, and I recommend it to anybody trying to find a good way to fill a Saturday night. Now, there's no reason you can't do this on a drill press if you got a freestanding drill press with a wide enough mouth, but since mine's a bench top one, I just couldn't fit the drawer underneath it, so I had to do it by hand. But it worked, and in the end, I got all my holes drilled out, and now I was ready to slather some glue onto our pre-cut dowels and hammer them home. This really takes you back to those little toys you had when you were a kid that your parents would give you that would keep you busy for hours because you'd hammer all the pegs in one side and then flip it over just to realize that you had to hammer the ones in on that side too. And then you'd flip it over and realize that the ones on the other side came loose so you had to hammer those back in and then 
you know, you just went back and forth forever, but it was fun, and it taught Hammer basics, which is important. After I got all of my dowels seated in there with a good amount of glue, I took a wet paper towel and wiped down all the excess glue. The main reason for this is because I'm about to flush cut these and I didn't want to get glue all over my saw. To flush cut them, I just used a Japanese pole saw and went nice and slow. And bada bing, bada boom. Zip, zap, zoop. It is cut and ready to be sanded. This is where it really starts to come to life. Now, you can't see it as good now because the end grain on the oak blends in a little bit with the walnut, but once we put finish on those dowels, they will pop out and look like a million bucks. And in no time, I had all of my dowels in place, flush cut, and sanded. And now it was time to cut all of the pieces for our internal dividers. So I milled down a bunch of stock to exactly half an inch thick and started ripping it down to the same height as the internal sides of my drawer box. And I went over to the miter saw, set up a stop block, and cut all the pieces of the length and just slid them in place. Now I'm gonna pull these back out when I finish them because I'm not even gonna glue these in. They're just gonna be friction fit. I figure that way if I ever wanted to store something bigger in the drawer, I'd always have the option to pull one or multiple of these dividers out and give myself a bigger drawer space. But for now, I'm just trying to double check and make sure everything fits, and most importantly, that my widest bottle will still fit in here, which is this bottle of bullet rye. And it fits. So we're good. Everything else should fit no problem. With our drawer completely constructed, it was finally time to start working on our drawer slides. Notice I'm saying slides now and not drawer sides. I see where that could be confusing. So the first thing I needed to do was to cut a half inch deep groove on both sides of my drawer boxes. This is what's going to allow my box to rest on my wood drawer slide. I wanted this slot to be about one inch wide, so leaving my half inch dado blade in place, I ran it through once and then flipped it around and ran it through again. The other benefit to doing it this way is you know that that groove is dead center in the middle of your drawer side. Also, this is a good time to note that, remember how I said you wanna get that dowel perfectly centered on that drawer side piece? Well, yeah, so that it perfectly lines up in the center of that groove and looks nice, not all wonkified and uneven. So I just started cutting like a madman until I had grooves cut in all four sides of my drawer boxes. As you can see, we got our nice groove down the middle, a dowel on each side, and that dowel right in the middle. This will need a little more sanding, but it's looking pretty good. Next, I took a ruler and I measured just to see the actual width of that groove. As you can see, it's about a sixteenth shy of one inch. So I went over to the table saw and I cut a few pieces of scrap down to just under that size. I mean, barely under that size just enough that it'll slide smoothly in there without being wedged in place, as you can see here. Once I had a nice fit and it was running smoothly in that track, just like this, I next needed to shrink down the thickness of this piece so that it would fit in the carcass of my coffee table. So I went over to the planer and I planed a couple pieces down to exactly three quarters of an inch. Why three quarters of an inch, you ask? Well, remember our groove is a half inch deep and we already spaced the drawers out with a quarter of an inch on either side for the cabinet. So by making this piece three quarters of an inch, it should, in theory, fit perfectly inside of our cabinet, just how it's supposed to. So I cut a couple pieces down to the right length and I walked over to the coffee table to see if I got everything measured correctly. And yes, I did. The key here is to have a nice fit, not too tight, but definitely not too loose. Just right so that it slides easily but isn't wedged in place. And I hopefully accomplished that here. 
Then, I don't know why, but I cut a little back bevel on the front of each one of my wooden drawer slide pieces. In my head, I thought maybe this would just make it easier to get the drawer on and off the tracks. It was probably completely unnecessary, but it does look a little nicer. Then I marked out and pre-drilled with that same 3 8 inch Forsner bit, just a few countersunk holes. These are just gonna be locations that I can put some screws in and screw my drawer slides in place. Speaking of which, it is time to screw my drawer slides in place. So I just cut a few scrap pieces of ply that will allow me to rest the drawer slide on top of and get the right spacing. These are just big enough to give me a quarter of an inch underneath the drawer itself, which is plenty to eliminate any rubbing or dragging on the bottom of the coffee table. Once it's set firmly with a little glue on top of that spacer piece, I pre-drill a few pilot holes and send in three one inch screws to hold that drawer slide nice and secure against the outside of the coffee table. Then once I have both my drawer slides screwed in place, I went and got my drawer box and I slid it on there to see if it worked. And it, yeah, it works. Ooh, nice, fancy. Ooh. And then I went over to the other side of the coffee table and I did the exact same thing over there because they're kind of a mere image of themselves. And what do you know? That drawer slid in just as well as the other one. Things are looking up. I mean, not that things were ever looking down, but they could have been if I had forgotten this next step, which was to create some sort of system to keep the drawer from coming all the way out and landing on someone's toe. Or worse, breaking a bottle of whiskey. So for this, I just simply grabbed a piece of pretty thick leather and I figured I'd screw one end to the back of the drawer and the other end to the back of the cabinet. And boom, I got a little stop that'll keep my drawer from coming all the way out. Now, if this had an upper drawer or a face frame, I could put a little flip up piece of wood on the back, but it doesn't. And I wanted to sit these so low to the bottom of the cabinet so as not to waste space that I couldn't put one on the bottom either. So this was really the best solution I could come up with that wasn't going to be too ugly. I actually kind of like the leather and walnut together. So after pre-drilling it on the back of the drawer, I drilled it to the back of the cabinet. And then all I had to do was slide the drawer in place and reach back there with my drill and screw the leather into the back of the drawer. This is a little awkward because I'm blind when I'm screwing this in, but it's not that bad and how often am I really going to be taking these drawers in and out? Probably not that often, if ever. And as you can see, it works great. So after doing it to one side, I did the same thing again to the other side because I don't know if I mentioned this, um, it's kind of a mirror image. We got the same thing going on on the other side. And finally, the last piece I needed to make was the drawer face that would sit, well, on the face of the drawer. Where else did you think it was gonna go? I mean, it is called a drawer face. So after cutting those pieces down to size, I was ready to finish these things. So I put my dividers in place and sanded everything so it was nice and smooth and even. I took a piece of sandpaper and by hand I broke down all those internal edges and I was ready to start wiping it down with a crazy amount of Rubio Monocoat. For this I'm just using Pure because that beautiful black walnut doesn't need anything else. I mean, there is that white oak in the bottom, I would have loved to stick some cotton white on that but... Yeah, that was too much work. As you can see with a little oil, those dowels really start to come to life. Sure, they're not hand cut dovetails, but it is a great option if you need to put hardwood drawers together and you don't wanna spend hours and hours doing it. Just drill some holes, make some dowels, and boom, you got yourself some drawers. After finishing the drawers themselves, I also finished the internal parts of the coffee table that I left unfinished so that we could glue those wood drawer slides on. And then the next morning after the finish was all dry, I came out with a chunk of carnauba wax and I waxed up the drawer really good. 
This is just going to help it slide on those wood runners just a little bit better. You can really use any kind of wax. You just want to stay away from any wax that's super gummy so that it doesn't attract dust. After waxing the drawers, I also took the time to wax the slides themselves, and with that, I was ready to reassemble everything and hopefully have a nicely working drawer and a finished coffee table. I mean, look. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, okay, that's enough. Thank you. With my drawers back in place, I reattached my leather stopping device thing that I made. Yep, still works. That's good. And finally, it was time to attach the drawer faces to the drawer boxes themselves. For this, I just used some eighth inch spacer blocks to bring it up off the bottom and match that shadow line I made on the end of the coffee table. And then I just eyeballed it for the sides. It looked pretty even to me. So I grabbed a few clamps with some paper towels so that I didn't mess up my freshly finished drawer face. Pulled the whole thing out, pre-drilled a few holes, and sank in some screws. And zip zap zoop, my drawer was completely installed. All right, man, that's enough pulling it in and out. We've literally watched you do that like a hundred times in this video and it's getting pretty annoying. With one side done, I went over and did the same thing to the other side. Because if you haven't noticed, it's kind of a mirror image over on that side, same thing going on over there. And then finally, the most important step was to fill these beautiful drawers with the beautiful nectar of the gods, dark brown liquor. And some like beigey liquor. And even one bottle of clear liquor. You know, for my grandma when she visits. And with that, we could close the drawer on this build. Or you could say we could Turn the lights off on this project. <laughs> I made a joke. Well, there you have it. Solid wood drawers that are very simple, quick, easy to make, and they look great. So if you don't want to spend your time trying to figure out how to do, you know, tedious dovetails or something like that, this is a great option. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you check out that video description for all the products, links, a link to my website. You can get plans on there for various things and a link to my Patreon account if you would like to support the channel further, Patreon is a great way to do it and I would so appreciate your patronage over there and it's just a really good fun time. We have a crazy amount of fun over there and you get to see a lot of behind the scenes footage that you don't get to see in the videos. So you might wanna check it out. Until next time. <laughs>